Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I've got a great big box to open up. Look how wide this thing is. This is another guitar from Bad Cat Instruments. They've sent me a few guitars, I want to say in the past year. They sent me uh, that acrylic guitar that I've got back there that I decorated with some vinyl a while back. I want to redo that soon. I like that guitar. I want to put more vinyl on it. Then they sent me like a Les Paul style thing. And then they sent me like a budget Strat style thing. You can go back and watch those videos if you want, or you could just watch this one. This is going to be like an Explorer style thing, which is very interesting. I've never been sent an Explorer style guitar from any brand. Am I opening this right? Here we go. This is it. I don't know if the overhead shot's going to catch it. Kind of an off-white color here. From the pictures, I assumed it was going to be pure white, but I kind of like that it's got a bit of a cream to it. Got your bag of Radio Shack cable and Allen wrenches here. So let's see what we got. I actually already own an Explorer style guitar. You can see it back here, but it's a parts guitar that I put together that has a Mexican Strat neck on it and a Bigsby and a pickup that I've been thinking about changing or maybe figuring out if I can coil split it. I don't play this guitar very often, uh, mostly because <laughs> the Explorer shape is fairly awkward for me. And also this isn't a very versatile guitar. I built it for a punk band that I was in. Uh, my wife likes looking at it. So we keep it around the house. It is a pretty guitar. It is a fun guitar to look at. Here we go. Right off the bat. Interesting, nice big volute there. Angled headstock. Closed back tuners. Polaris 4 music. Oops, I'm already knocking it around. P4M. I'm assuming this is a sub brand of Bad Cat Instruments. It has covered pickups that say EMG on it. Are these real EMGs? That's very interesting if they are. It's almost more interesting if they're not. So let's get some first impressions here. It's not as heavy as I thought it might be. My, my parts explorer back there is a brick. Black hardware, tunematic, stop tail, Apparently EMG pickups. I'm assuming volume, tone, pickup selector, no pick guard, it doesn't need it. It's going for a very specific look here. I'm not seeing any finish flaws. I mean, there's a bunch of, you know, foam dust on it from coming out of the packaging. But it looks like the finish is clean. By the way, this guitar on the Bad Cat Instruments website is 279 I think, but they've given me a code for $30 off and that puts it at 249 So it's a $250 guitar that I'm holding right now. I don't expect a lot out of guitars that cost 250 bucks, but sometimes they surprise me and they can be uh, a lot better than I'd expect. A little bit of polishing compound around the switch. That's not unusual for guitars of any price point to find polishing compound left somewhere in a nook and cranny on a guitar. The ends of the frets seem to be dressed just fine. No sharp sprouting or anything like that. There's a little bit of a roll on the edges of the fretboard, but boy, that that is a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. I never play my Explorer because it's such a brick. I have my scale here because I knew this was going to was going to come up, just because my Explorer is so heavy. Let's see what it says: eight pounds eleven ounces. Oh boy. Watch it be the same weight and it's all in my head. 
No. It's a full pound and an ounce heavier. It's nine pounds and 12 ounces. <laughs> All tuned up and ready to go, I hope anyways. Sounds like it. I did notice that the strings are a bit dry and abrasive feeling. I like to use this Tibet almond stick stuff to give my strings a nice slick feeling. It also helps with the guitars that I leave out on holders and things like that and their strings get dusty and crusty, this helps knock it back. So I'm just gonna lubricate the strings a little bit so I have a good time playing. As far as the tuners go, they seem fine. They're not sticky or jumpy, there's no dead spots in there. I wouldn't blink if these tuners were on a four or $500 guitar. They're not luxurious. Like I'm not gonna write in my diary about the excellent time I had tuning a guitar today. <laughs> but they're totally fine. Nothing wrong with them, unless you have some sort of specific tuner preference, which I'm sure you do. You're so picky, aren't you? Why are you so picky? Why are you like that? So let's get into it. I did notice while I was tuning it that the fretboard has this fun inlay. It kind of, it kind of is doing like the Gibson pineapple thing, but it looks closer to someone flipping the bird. <laughs> it looks like a fist with a middle finger sticking up, which is kind of fun and kind of fits the personality of this guitar. Do you agree with me? It's not vulgar, but it hints at it, which is fun. I like that. What do you guys think about that inlay? So let's get into it. I want to hear this thing. I'm on the middle position right now. not usually where I play that riff. Play it in the normal position now. I just wanted to get those open strings. Here is the bridge position. It's a much thinner sounding bridge. Here's the neck. to the bridge. Getting a thin, somewhat nasal sound from the bridge pickup, where that neck pickup has the boom, doesn't it? The pickups have different color logos on them. The neck pickup has a gold logo and the bridge pickup has a silver logo. I'm wondering if they are meant to be drastically different models that give you different tonality for some reason. I mean, clearly this guitar wants high gain, so maybe we'll find out, you know, what that's supposed to be for when we get into some high gain stuff. Spoiler alert, we're gonna get into some high gain stuff. I actually put together a little pedal board that's on the table that's going to be like this stereo metal sort of deal. But until then, let's go through some of the pedals I have on my normal pedal board on the floor. I've got the Wampler Bell here. We'll try it with the bridge pickup first. Middle position. that middle position. And the neck. I'm just all over the map noodling today. It feels like the action could be lower. Yeah, it could definitely be lowered. I mean, it's not, you know, like 
telephone wire right now off the ground, but I could, I could probably give it a couple turns on the bridge here and get it quite a bit more comfortable. I'm hearing the squeak of my pants through the guitar, which is telling me that this probably has microphonic pickups. Neck looks plenty straight enough. I should be able to lower this. I might need to make a couple little tweaks to the truss to get it, you know, like shredder ideal, but I don't play like that anyway, so I'm probably not gonna do that. Let's try it with some more gain. Here is the Bad 94 Distortion Perfecto de Castro signature pedal that he gave to me. I'm gonna stack it with a Wampler. It's fun to stack the bell into the Bad 94. <laughs> been the bridge pickup. Here's the middle. Here is the neck. Ooh yeah. There's feedback. Bridge pickup. Microphonic. Yeah. Definitely, definitely microphonic pickups here. That's a pretty normal thing I've been finding for the past couple of years with various import guitars, especially guitars in this price point. It seems like pretty much all the pickups that I'm finding in guitars at this price point just have microphonic pickups. It's just the reality of shopping sub $300. I think that's really where it's happening. Now, I really don't think these are real image images. <laughs> that should be obvious by now. So, what's next? I don't have a camera on it. Maybe I should pull my pedal board up real quick. That's gonna be a pain in the... I need to do it. I need to do it. I wanna... I wanna test out how the nut is cut. I was noticing it was pulling a little bit out of tune. Right there. I have a feeling the nut's cut a little bit too high. It's better for it to be cut high than too low because then you have to replace the nut or do baking soda tricks and whatnot. Sometimes these affordable guitars, the nuts aren't cut deep enough and they'll pull out of tune in the cowboy chord area. Yeah, that's going sharp. Uh, that's, it's going the other direction, which is probably what was leading to those power chords sounding out of tune. Yeah, <laughs> it's going the other direction. Is there intonation issues? That's probably it. And intonation. That one could come down. The G's fine. Uh, no, that's fine. So a couple of these strings, the nut needs to be just filed down a little bit and there's some intonation that needs to happen on the bridge. None of that is a huge surprise at this price point. I mean, you buy a guitar 
that sub $300, like the $250 price point, you're gonna have to expect to do some work on it. Like it's very, very rare that you buy a guitar in that price point and there's not some sort of setup stuff that needs to happen. Moving on to my special little treat that I put together just for this video, a stereo metal pedal board. I've got an electroharmonic switchblade here, splitting the signal with one side going into my Japanese HM2. The other side is going into my Boss Metal Zone because of course you've got to have a metal zone on a stereo metal rig, right? I mean, that's just the standard. And then both of those are passing through the Boss DD8 and then one of them, only one side is passing through the Juliana for some thick syrupy like heavy metal chorus going on. It's the HM2 that is going through the chorus and the metal zone is going through unaffected and they're all going through the two Princeton's rig, of course, which I forgot to call out earlier in the video. I am so sorry. I'll give you extra two princes right now. Let's get started. So we'll do one side at a time. There's the metal zone side. Here is the HM2 side. And here they are together. better with both of them, right? This guitar really needs a setup. That's a pretty fun metal tone. What do you guys think of that? Right on the neck pickup. Middle.
Yeah, the action needs to be lowered on this. Need to dial in the intonation a little bit. Need to file out a couple of those nut slots just a little bit. And if I was going to gig with this on a loud stage, playing high gain music, I would need to swap those pickups. But it is a $250 guitar. And I'll say this, if you are Explorer Shape curious, there's not a ton of options out there. And it's a very unique body style. I don't play this guitar a lot. <laughs> One, because it's heavy. It's heavier than it probably should be. It's a giant chunk of mahogany here. It's just, it's just a brick around my neck. Something about that extra pound really feels a lot heavier than this guitar. But, the, I mean, I have other heavy guitars that I play. I think the bigger thing there is that this wing back here is a very different experience holding a guitar versus a more traditional shape. I would really recommend to anyone who is Explorer Shape curious to get a budget version first. Yeah, you're gonna have to do some work to get it playing the way that you want, but spend some time interacting with that body shape. Don't go spend $1,600, you know, $1,200, whatever they cost, even $800. Go buy a $200 something thing and test it out See if it fits with your body. See if you like the way that it feels. Because it is a very unique feeling body style. You know, I'm gonna see if I can lower the action on this thing. Get it playing a little bit better. It's a fair thing to do, right? So what I'm saying all of you will need to do if you get a guitar like this. All right, let's see if that's any better. Yeah, already that feels a lot better. I'm not having to think about playing so much.
did it. First try, too. Let's try it with delaying court. Almost. I almost did it. So what do you guys think? It's not without issues. But very rarely are guitars in this price point without issues. And the issues it has are, they're fairly common. Like a guitar showing up without its intonation set up correctly is fairly common in this price point. It's a little bit less common to have those specific nut issues. This time it's a couple strings, notably the low E that needs to get lowered in the slot a little bit because it's just, it's pulling out a tune. And with a guitar like this, you need your low E, you need your chugga chuggas and you need to connect it to a fifth on that second string down. You just need to, right? So yeah, for this to be playable, I would need to get in there with one of my files and lower that until it comes in tune with the other strings in you know the lower fret area. I think there were a couple that were a little bit sharp as well when fretted around here, but the low E is really suspect number one right now. The pickups are microphonic, but that is incredibly common with guitars of this price point. Like, I can't think of any guitars in like the $250 to $200 range that haven't had microphonic pickups as far as humbuckers go that I've covered in the past couple of years. It just, it just seems to be the norm these days. But if you're handy and if you're watching this channel, you might be. There's nothing on here that isn't fixable. For $250, bucks, you get an Explorer style guitar. The neck is comfortable. The frets feel fine on it. The tuners feel fine. It looks cool. When I adjusted that, uh, the bridge, it was nice and smooth. The bridge hardware seems of decent quality. The inlays look decent for this price point. There's not like the giant resin channels around them like I've seen in other guitars at this price point. I want to crack open that back panel to see what we're working with as far as the wiring goes. And maybe we'll get a hint as to whether or not there are active electronics in this. I really, really, really doubt it. We'll find out though. There we go. Nope, there's, there's nothing active in here. There's no surprises either. This is exactly what I was expecting. A couple of mini pots, some wire, a switch, and that's it. Yeah, no surprises there. All right, so for 250 bucks, what do you guys think? I think it's a project starter at 250 bucks. To get this gig ready, I would have to swap out the pickups. I just would. They're too microphonic. They're feeding back too easily. I'm playing really low volume in here. I don't crank the amps and the feedback that I was getting really, really shows how microphonic those are. If you're playing in low volume and you're playing with headphones or something like that, it's really not an issue. But yeah, I had the same experience with a previous Bad Cat where the nut just wasn't cut completely correctly and it needed to be filed down and lowered to be cowboy cord ready. And that's what this needs, especially on that low E. Other than that, making intonation tweaks to the bridge is pretty easy. Everyone should figure out how to do that. You have a screwdriver, you can do it. If you have a screwdriver and any tuner, you can make intonation changes and adjustments on your own guitar. And if you mess it up so bad that you have no idea what you're doing, any tech can reverse it and put it to normal for you. 
Yeah, this is interesting. All right, thanks to Bad Cat for sending me yet another guitar. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.